Hey folks, Christopher German here for Coffee with the Candidates, a product of the Sunshine News. We have an incredible candidate today, but uh, you know, just a quick recap. We've talked with all kinds of different people that are running for office here in this community, and it's important that we continue to have these conversations because this is the way we're getting down to all the nitty gritty, all the details, all the things that need to happen. And you're just not going to get that in a forum type of fashion. I mean, they have, a lot of times they have a, uh, a planned answer and it just doesn't get to the depths of things that we would like to get to. So this is our chance to really get to know the candidates. And the person we have today, uh, she actually joined me on uh, when I was at my previous allocation and my previous site, what I was doing. But uh, we're going to update the interview and we're going to continue to find out what's going on and hopefully get to know a little bit more about Sally Ann Palkovich, one of my very dear friends, somebody that I've, I've gotten to know over the time that we've been doing these programs. And quite frankly, without further ado, let's hear it from her, shall we? Sally, how are you doing today? Doing just fine. How's the campaign going? Tell me about that. Oh, it's it's busy, yeah. I have to say. I, I have to say that um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I told you that the last time we talked. I have never run for any political office. And, you know, you hear the stories about mudslinging and stuff. And mm. I've heard you've you been victim to some mudslinging and unfortunately, some nefarious acts and all kinds of good stuff. Yep. There's rumors all around this place right now. This is a hotbed, isn't it? <laughs> I know. It? <laughs> so it's just, it's sad that it has to happen here, too. Yeah. And, and that kind of grieves me that our community is prey to that kind of behavior and those activities. So um, well, I, the important part is after the bell rings and everybody's votes are counted, then we can all come together and get to work. So let's let's sling the mud now and get it out of the way, shall we? I, let's, not, <laughs> let's not sling the mud, though. And I've decided that, you know, I actually had thought about ways that I could, you know, crawl in the gutter with those folks. And I decided that's not where I am. I don't do that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So I want to be above all that. And that's that's who I am. Well, you're going up against Derek DeGroot. Um, for the, the third commissioner seat, and that is going. That's been uh, you're actually you're in one of the smallest races. Actually, <laughs> you, know, know. you don't have eight candidates running against you, and that you only have the, a couple other people running out there. So, really? so how's that been? What's what's going on with uh, with the race? I'm I'm running um, and going out and meeting people, going around various parts of the county, talking to folks, and learning what's going on where. And there's some real concerns about the way the current current commissioners, not just the group, but all all three of them, have been handling a lot of the situations. People are not feeling they've been heard, and just the fact that I show up says, "Wow, you're you're here. We've never had a commissioner or a candidate for commissioner ever come and talk to us before." Yeah, and I think that says a lot to the folks that I'm visiting. Well, and that says something about, I think, this race in particular. And I dare say I think I had a little bit to do. I hope I've had a little bit to do with it. And getting it opened up and getting, yes. you know, people talking and getting people to have communication and, and facilitating communication between the candidates and everybody. What are, they, what, are they, what are the voters telling you? Actually, before we get to that question, sure. let, some people are just meeting you right now. I'm sure you right. haven't talked to every person in Klamath County. No, so not So do a quick rundown of, of who you are and where you come from and your, your, your various acumens that you've, you've done. Okay. Well, I've been here for 25 years. In, the, in Klamath County. I came up here 25 years ago um, having been offered a job at Sky Lakes Medical Center as the executive director of their foundation. At that time it was called Merle West Medical Center and I did all the fundraising for 18 years at the hospital until I retired. I also I have a clergy background. I'm an ordained Lutheran minister and I also got to serve as their chaplain. So I was on call 24-7, worked basically two full-time jobs, but got paid for one. Uh -huh. So I'm no stranger to hard work, <laughs> just saying that. <laughs> and through those, those positions, I got to know a lot of people in the community. And part of it, well, I moved up here, I didn't know anybody. I'm a total newbie to this town 25 years ago. And I had the privilege, the hospital owned Crystal Terrace at that time, and all of the old movers and shakers of Klamath County, the people who formed this town, they lived there. Uh -huh. And I got to know Mabel Whiskey Hensel, I got to know um, Toad and Ruth Boyd, I, I got to know all these people who, who knew about the logging and the, the 
ranching and the farming and all of the things that made Klamath what it is. Mm. And they shared that information with me. Shared a lot of other things too, but we won't talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's kind of the amazing part is, is that this isn't such an old community. Right. I mean, quite frankly, we probably still have a few people that remember, you know, back when horses were, 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 were around here and that kind of thing. And, you know, so that's, that's really cool to, to know that you, you touch base with those types of people. Yeah. That's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. And, and the fact that they respected me enough to tell me those stories. Um, anybody who's out there listening, Heart Mountain, I know about Heart Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hold it against you, but just know I know. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I think that helped me get a, a real good grounding in what this community is, what made us who we are, and who we can become. Uh -huh. and, and I think that was really important. I also then jumped into the volunteer workforce here, I guess you could call it the workforce. One of my board members, I moved here the end of February and in March she took me to an event and said, where's your membership application form? She needs to join. And I started right there, I joined the Assistance League of Klamath Basin. I also ended up joining Seroptimus. I'm a member of a PEO chapter. and. I also chair a group called Circle of Hearts right now. Uh -huh. But I got involved in a lot of other things. Um, the Klamath Basin Visitor Association, which is a precursor to what is now Discover Klamath. Mm -hmm. I was the charter president of that. Um, I helped to develop a, the food commission that the county has now when I was working with Blue Zones. So I've been involved in a lot of different ways. Chaired the Snowflake Festival Parade Committee a couple, couple years. So, so I've been involved in a lot of different things in the community. So everybody knows you here, right? I wish. <laughs> I wish everybody knew me and loved me. Well, we can. But I think the people who know me do love me. Yeah. So, so, um, and we have to get this out of the way. We come from the same community back back east. We both come from New Haven, Connecticut, which yeah. is very, very cool. It's so great to meet a fellow New Haven it is. Um, but other than that, what, are, what have people been saying? I mean, you've been talking to all kinds of different folks around here. What, what, is, what is on the hearts and minds of the people that are voting in this uh, election coming up? I think, and like I said, I think the biggest issue I hear is communication. Yeah. They're feeling like no one's communicating, no one's talking to them. Things are happening, and all of a sudden, it's like, when did that happen? When, is, when did somebody decide to do that? Because suddenly, tiny houses show up, or a rooftop garden, or whatever. And they're saying, when did we vote to do that? Mm -hmm. Who, who's making these decisions? And why are we not getting another tender for the fire department out at Rocky Point mm -hmm. when they don't have water and they need more water out there because they're right near the forest and there are more fires coming? Why are we not dealing with the issues that really need to be dealt with and why are we doing all this other fluffy stuff? Yeah. And so they're thinking that things are being done behind their backs. Mm -hmm. And um, transparency is a huge issue that I'm hearing from people. It's like, tell us what you're doing. It's probably okay, but we want to know. Mm -hmm. Don't just suddenly spring it on us. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the reasons why I started the Sunshine News, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing here today, is because, quite frankly, I don't think there's... We're not as effective as a media that we could be in telling the stories here. And we're not getting a lot of cooperation from the city officials or, this, or the county officials in terms of telling these stories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it... it I, I echo the sentiments of everybody as it's, yeah. it's difficult to understand what's happening here. Not least of which because it's a 6,200 miles, you know, yeah. county. It's a big county. It's huge. And, you know, we don't have Pony yeah. Express anymore to share yeah. stuff. Being, so. being from Connecticut, you know, it's as big as New Hampshire and Vermont put together. Yes. <laughs> that has some sense for us. Yes. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is, is where we come from back in Connecticut. I mean, every town knew what was happening in every town. They're all next to each other. Yeah. And here to, I mean, the closest town to the west of us is Boise, Idaho, <laughs> you know, it's, there's some distance out there to cover, yes, you know, yes. so it's not as easy to get information around here. And besides that, people aren't necessarily talking, so right. we need to change all that. Right. How do you think that's going to, how, how are you going to change that as, as a commissioner? One of the things that I intend to do, as I'm going around campaigning, meeting with people in various communities, um, you know, Bonanza, Rocky Point, wherever I'm going, one of the things I want to do is continue doing that as commissioner, to continue to have those town halls and community meetings and, and say, here's what's happening, here's what we need, what, we need to hear from you, what do you need, how can we take 
what we have and, and help you. How can we work this all together? So, you know, everybody doesn't get everything they want, but how can we cooperate and work together and make things happen and, and just tell you what's happening everywhere mm -hmm. and, and hear from them what's happening out there because the people who live in those communities know what's needed and what, what the issues are out there. And if we're not talking to them, we're making these decisions in a vacuum, and that's not a good way to make decisions. That's been a common theme with the people I've been talking to from the commissioner's races, is, is that, you know, they drive all the way out from, you know, East, East Klamath County, North Klamath County. I mean, they're way far out there, and they have to drive in here, and they only get 30 seconds to, or a minute to speak. Um, you know, it's, it's just not a great way to share information. It's not a great way to impart what needs to be imparted. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I mean, Nobody's going to drive two hours to come to a commissioner's meeting. I'm sorry, it's not that entertaining. <laughs> I wish it was more entertaining, but it's yeah. not. So it's maybe we can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> At least hand out you know free hot dogs or something, something. like that. You yeah, know? you know popcorn or something. <laughs> well, perhaps we won't get that done yet. But yeah. well, but I. I have been involved at the Linkville Theater, so okay. maybe I can do a little acting. Well, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Keep it entertaining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so tell me, um, what's happening on the agendas so on your platform? What, what, have you changed any of your, your beliefs? Have you, have you, have you migrated at all? Or is, no. What's going on with your platform? Well, I'm, I'm learning more, like, like the water issues. Mm. And the more I learn, the more I need to learn. Yes. <laughs> and... Um, and realize that we need, I need to be talking to more and more experts. And I'm not sure that there's any, only one expert that we can talk to. And again, it's that bringing everybody together and, and talking to a whole bunch of people and, and seeing if we can hammer out some decisions. Sometimes, you know, when I was a pastor, sometimes one of the things we would do at a church council meeting is we'd be there till two in the morning because it was an issue that needed to be resolved and we're, I said, we're staying here till we get that figured out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to do sometimes, wear people down so they finally say, yes, we can, we can agree on this. We'll, we're willing to give up a little of this. We're willing to give up a little of that. And we come together and we have a bigger, better thing. I'm glad you bring up the, the, the water issue because we just had an incredible interview yesterday um, with uh, Moss, uh, Moss Driscoll. Oh, yeah. And he was telling us all about how the lake is filled to, to the brim right now and this well, this springtime and all the way through the summer into next fall, next winter it's going to be putting a ton of water out and that iron gate dam is not going to be able to handle that kind of water flow and we have a potential an emergency developing because of that hasn't been thought of yet and there's no plan for that what yeah. do you think about all that yeah unfortunately i think that is one of the issues that we have to we deal with here is that people take actions and they don't think about the future you know, right. they don't they only look at it in a, the split second here and then they don't make contingency plans for the future or seeing you know um, what's going to happen if this happens mm -hmm. and so yeah I I, I that I, I I don't know what we can do yeah. I mean I, you know, well, we need to be prepared, and that's part Moss of Driscoll's worrying about it. So, <laughs> sure. well, and and we now have, um, and if you Ian Thigpen, mm -hmm. and he's somebody you might want to talk to at some point too. He is the I, I don't know his official title, but he's like the safety person for the county, mm -hmm. and he's been establishing this um, community organizations active in disasters mm -hmm. that is activated when there's some kind of disaster but it's also proactive so it's looking at where where might there be some disasters so that we can avert some things and what resources do we already have in the community to help respond to those potential disasters uh-huh and so you've you so, spoken with him and you know the, the plan I for i haven't spoken with him okay but i well on a zoom meeting <laughs> mm. um but i also um have been involved with this co-ed and Michelle Crane is the executive director. Okay. And um, as the president of the Assistance League here now, that's one of the, I moved through the ranks, I guess, <laughs> ended up president. And one of, we've been called upon because there was a, in the, the Golden Fire, mm -hmm. um, one of, there was a, a young woman, young girl, teenager, who wanted to play softball. And I mean, she was playing softball. And because of the the fire, all of her equip, her whole home home was uh, burned up, and all of her sport, uh, software, softball equipment 
can tell my New England was softball, right? No. <laughs> um, it got, it was gone. And so they came to the Assistance League and asked us if we could help her with her, with her gear. Her, her gear. Yeah. And so we were able to give her a, a gift certificate um, to go to Big Five and purchase her softball equipment. So she got some new equipment. So she's, and so she's, she's able playing. to play softball. That's awesome. And so it's just responding to those special needs. So it's not just a big disaster like a train wreck or something, right. but even those individual families helping them. And I think the co-ed is one of the places that we need to. I think it's a great idea. And so we get to um, respond and, like I said, be proactive. They're already doing trainings like how do you move big large animals like horses and mm -hmm. cattle yeah those are things we have to know what, how to do if there's a, if there's something like a flood like or a giant wood. flood yeah you gotta get yeah. all the horses and cattle yeah. a lot of them yeah. yeah so i think working with that group has been a real is a good thing and i think that's one of the things we need to um really work with more um, well, I yeah. have another question for you. Sure. A good soundbite moment, I think, was coming up here. Um, there are not a terribly large amount of women running in this race. Um, I, in fact, you're the first female I've interviewed in, in this little series that I'm doing here. Um, we have Regina Jackson over mm -hmm. there, and there's a, there's a couple women running in. But, but what's it like as a female running through running this community? I mean, we have a lot of females represented on the city council. Mm -hmm. And fall in yeah. Colhamath Falls, and then we also have um, we have Kelly Minty over there. Yeah. What's it like being a woman doing this? I guess I never think about that. Okay. Too much. Um, <laughs> well, you know, when I when I decided I wanted to be ordained as a Lutheran pastor, my church did not ordain women, so I pioneered. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to meetings. I talked to people. I talked to clergy. I talked to parishioners. I talked to lots of people. And um, women were then ordained. Mm. Um, it's never been easy um, when you're the, among the first. It's there's always challenges. Run into people who I, I, I've run into people who'd say, "Yeah, you seem like a nice person, but I would never vote for a woman." Mm. It's like, are you running into that a bit of that here? Here, yeah, yeah. We've run That's into that here, but you know, hopefully, you know, you keep. Keep hoping that some of these the values that we started in the 60s and 70s with women having the right to do any job they wanted to do. I mean, I have friends who are um, sanitation truck truck drivers. I mean, they're and they're women and um, whatever you want to do, if you're capable of doing it, you can. You should be able to do it. Well, I can just so, tell my, my, my posture here. I'm, I'm not, usually I say there, it's the men, I'm doing this kind of thing, and, you know, very, very rigid. And I'm just still much more comfortable talking to you. So. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good, I like that. And, and I do think, I, I found in, in my churches when I was in the churches, usually it was the hierarchy that objected to the woman. Mm -hmm. The congregations were like, so what? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I'd rather talk to you than talk to him who, you know. Um, and especially, I mean, more. I, I do think that there are more women than men. Although I, I did read when I first moved up here, they said there were more men than women in Klamath County. Uh huh. Um, I think there's more women now because the men are dying off faster. I think it could be. <laughs> it's hard to tell. But, but um, you know, maybe it's evening out a little bit yeah. more. But I think. You know, there are enough women that we need to be represented. Well, there's enough women that are working on these farms around here, Absolutely. and there's tons of women that are doing all kinds of different. Uh, uh, they're fighting yeah. in the fighter planes over at uh, Kingsley Field. Yeah. You know, so uh, I mean, there's no reason to think that you know we shouldn't give women the same amount of respect for this job that we would give any other person. Absolutely. The same. And I'm glad to see you're doing it. Thank you for representing women for all of us. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm well, we've got to do it. <laughs> we got about uh, I don't know five, six more minutes to go. So before we get out of here, tell me how can somebody get involved if they want to get involved in your candidacy? I have a Facebook page and I have a website. You can go on those um, sallyforklamath.com and um, like me, share it. Mm -hmm. um, I have lawn signs out there. I have. I have a couple of big signs. I'm looking for places to hang up, four foot by eight foot signs. So if you have a place, let me know. Um, if you want to talk to me, call me, text me, um, send me an email. I'm, I'm out there to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm willing to do that. 
Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, then, you know, before we, we say goodbye here, what are what are your parting words for this race? How are we going to get people out to get out of their vote? Are you expecting a big turnout for this election? Are you expecting this to be a, a resounding vote for <laughs> democracy in Klamath County? Or is this going to be the same situation? I think one of the things that concerns me is something you mentioned at the very beginning, how many people are running. Yeah. And a lot of people are feeling so overwhelmed by the numbers of people that are running, especially for position one and, and the sheriff that they're saying, I don't even know who to vote for. Yeah. And I'm afraid they may just kind of get that paralysis that comes when you're, you know, when you go into a restaurant and you have a menu that's eight pages long and mm -hmm. you're like, I don't know what I want to eat. And I think that's, I'm hearing that from people. And it's too bad that there are so many people that we aren't a little bit smaller races because I think that would bring out more people because they would feel more comfortable voting. But I think the way it is, they don't feel like their vote's going to count that much because it's going to come down to a November to two people, and might they might as well wait till November to vote. Yeah, well, so they're going to guarantee that it goes to November if they don't yeah. vote in the May election. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think everybody should vote. Whoever you want to vote for, please just go out and vote. You'll be getting the ballots are supposed to be dropping around May first, sometime during that week. The voter pamphlets are coming out, I think, the week before. So read the voter pamphlet. Um, I would think most of them, most candidates will be in there and their contact information, call and ask them questions. Well, Sally Ann Palkovich, it has been an honor. I, I shake everybody's hand. I, I dare say I will shake a lady's hand as well. Thank you, you so bet. much for being here today. And thank you for watching today because this is the important stuff, folks. If, if you, if that's one of the nice parts about these long format interviews that we're doing is, is that if you really need to know the candidates, I think you're getting a pretty good understanding from each and every person we've talked to. And if you know a candidate that hasn't come in here and had a cup of coffee with me at the Waffle House, home of the Smash Burger, then get them down here because this is what it's all about. We need to talk. We need to get these, the, we, well, let's get to know all these people that are running. And then we can make an educated decision about who's going to lead our community for here on out. Because the next four years, as uh, Mr. Driscoll said yesterday, is going to be a critical time for this community. I'm Christopher German for the Sunshine News. I want to thank you for watching. And tune in because we drop these videos every Friday, all of the week. We spend the whole week here eating, drinking coffee and talking to people. And we're going to drop them all on Friday. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.